How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. In this video I'm going to be speaking about a Land Rover Defender that I worked on recently. It came into the workshop with the engine management light on and it was severely underpowered. I'm going to be showing you what I found and how I fixed this particular problem. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing is the vehicle when it came in was in limp home mode. It had the engine management light on and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the fault codes and see what is actually logged on the ECU. Uh, when I ran the fault codes there was multiple ones on it. I knew a lot of them weren't related to the fault code so I saved them, I cleared them and then it was road test time so we wanted to see if the fall came back immediately or what was actually happening on the road test. The good thing about me doing that first was when I kicked it out of limp home mode, I have a fully active system again. There's nothing restricting and there's nothing being shut down to protect any items. So in that road test, I was able to find out a, a noise because it wasn't in limp home mode. If it was still in that limp mode, I wouldn't have been able to pick this noise as fast as what I did. So uh, the noise showed up on the road test um, in the lower uh, gears at the higher rev range. That's when I felt it most and that's when it was most present. So between 1500, no, between 2000 to uh, 32, I would say, was about the range of acceleration. When it was under load like that, I could hear a noise from the uh, what sounded like the right hand front of the vehicle. It was a blowing type of noise and it gave me a good indication of what I wanted to go and investigate with that. When I, when I was coming back, the engine management light came back on again and I was going to run the fault code straight away to see what it was in the workshop. Got it back in, ran the fault code and it presented with one of the ones that was already on it, which was P0101 stroke 17. That was the fault code that came back. That fault code related to mass or volume airflow, circuit range slash performance, circuit voltage above threshold. Now, when analyzing a fault code, you want to have an idea of what that fault code means. What this fault code was giving me an indication of is it was seeing too much, it was exceeding. So we're not talking about a restriction or a blockage. We're talking about too much volume coming through. That with the noise gives me a good idea what to look for. Now, if you have this code and you don't have similar problems to what I have, there can be other items that causing it. Uh, the mass airflow is one you have to look at. Wiring and connection of that is um, something that would have to be checked out. Then the system itself, uh, which is the side I'm going on, which is the intercooler pipes, the air intake, we're looking for splits, uh, we're looking for leaks under pressure, under load, that would be causing this type of problem. The uh, intercooler pipes on the left hand side and the right hand side, the right hand side is where I was looking first, that and the intercooler. Now I had a good... Um, investigation of both pipes the clamps weren't off there was nothing there causing an issue so immediately i wanted to take off the six screws that was holding down the grill and give me a much clearer uh, access to the intercooler once i had that grill out of the way um a couple of minutes of looking around it was very obvious as to what the fault was the intercooler had failed it had bulged out on one side it had split and it was causing um, under load the system to be leaking heavily and that's why you could hear it uh, hissing through at certain rev ranges. If you were in limp mode, if you were only keeping it on the lower side of the revs, it would be a lot more difficult to pinpoint down that noise as easy as what I was hearing it. With that said, it was a case of getting off all the items I needed to remove to gain access to the intercooler. So with the front grill already removed, it's then removal of these six screws that hold in this top plastic cover. With that removed, you have clear access to the slam panel. And also, um, I'm gonna go about removing 
the uh, air conditioning assembly and that's held in by three 10 millimeter bolts. With those removed, it's on to the slam panel, which is held in by four 13 mil nuts. I'm using my long spanner and a ratchet spanner to zip those out. Once I have those removed, I'm gonna go about um, taking off the uh, intercooler supporting uh, bolts on the inside. There's a 10 mil on either side, which leaves the intercooler free. Then I remove the washers or spacers, and uh, there's eight of those that need to come off. Then the inner support brackets, a left-hand side and a right-hand side. The intercooler sits into these, but also so does the air conditioning pipes on the right-hand side. The right-hand side is particularly um, finicky because it does hold the bonnet latch as well and another bracket on the inside. but. A bit of jiggling and it will come out once that is out i can set about uh, loosening off the hose clamps uh, the intercooler hose clamps on both sides the right hand the left hand side and then i pull them back away uh, once they are out it leaves room that i can tilt the intercooler forward pull it out on the right hand side and then the left hand side after that as you're seeing it when that is um out we can see uh, the intercooler damage it's quite badly damaged it's split heavily on the inside and then on the outer edge that was viewable uh, on the initial inspection you can see that it's uh, bulged and lifted away a quick comparison of the new part to make sure that everything is right before we completely remove the packaging and then it is installed i'm not going to show the whole install um, you have the removal process I go over everything and make sure that there is no leaks. The engine is running now and I'm just double, doubling over on everything that I see. After that, it's on to the road test and clear the fall codes and get out on the road. Everything's now back together and I'm at the end of my road test with this vehicle. It is performing exactly as it should. So under acceleration, we have no loss of pressure now. There is no hissing from that right hand front corner, which initially was there. No engine management light on, no fault code stored, and this problem is now fixed. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.